Good morning and welcome to us for the family with Business Smile Eden. God is good all the time. We thank God for keeping us alive to see this day which He has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. With the Lord's goodness that has kept us alive to see this day, and we must remember that in every, everything we do today, that we give our God pleasure. That God still has a purpose for us to be here in this world. To do its will and to carry this gospel of salvation to the entire world. And that's why we are here. While we are here, let us rejoice and be glad for the opportunity God has given us to present Him here on earth. Of everything God created, He chose us humans to be the ones that take with love the message of the good news of salvation to the entire world. He made us the head of everything He created, that we are the ones that give authority to name the things that He created. He made us in His own likeness and image. He loved us so much that while we are yet sinners, he sent his soul to die for us. Let us rejoice and thank God for his goodness, for his faithfulness. We will never understand the depth of God's love for us. But one thing we know is that God loves us. He was acknowledged the fact that we are most loved of every other thing that God created. Let us thank God and bless him for his goodness and for his love for us. For everything he has done for us. For setting tables every day before us in the presence of our enemies. For anointing our head with oil. For helping us when we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, we know our God is right there with us to lead us. That his rod and his staff will never depart from us. That's the God we have. We should rejoice that this morning he has refreshed us. He has, he, he has provided everything that we need for this day. And we know that. He is with us, that will never leave us. That wherever we go, the Spirit of God is going to go with us and is going to enable us to do the things that we do today in the name of Jesus. The grace of God is going to avail for all of us today. We must trust God when we come to Him and believe that He is able to help us. If we do not trust Him, then we are wasting our time when we come before Him to call Him God. Why do we come to someone we do not trust? Why do we go to a God we do not trust to help us? We know our God is able to help us. He created us. He is our God. We have no other God. And that's why we always come before Him to call Him our Father. As we come before, as we come before God today, let us examine ourselves in ways we have seen it is our God. The things that we have done and those things that we have forgotten to do. Let us ask God to have mercy on us. This is the time for self-examination. Let's look inside. If there's anything that we have done that is contrary to the will of God, this is time to ask God for mercy. There are those things that we are supposed to have done that we know that God wanted us to do that we did not do. Let us ask God to have mercy on us. Let us pray for enablement from the Spirit of God to help us to do the will of God here on earth. Let us ask God to give us the grace to forgive people that have sinned against us. So that when we come before Him, there will be nothing in us that will prevent us from receiving from God because we are holding bitterness, mildness, grudges against people that offended us. Let us ask God to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us pray at this time that the will of God be done in our lives as here on earth as it is in heaven. Let us commit our families unto the hands of God. Let us commit our nations unto the hands of God. The institutions and everything that God created here that the enemy is trying to destroy, let us commit all into the hands of God, especially our marriages and homes our children, our relationships with one another. Let us pray that God will help us to be, to be considerate and loving to one another as He wants us to be. At this time, let us pray for the Spirit of God to come in and Israel and to help us through this, this session. 
that the Spirit will enlighten our minds and open our eyes to see the things that we will take out from the passage that we are going to study today. Let us pray for wisdom, that God will fill us with wisdom, and that He will give us strength that we need, the enablement to go out to testify about the goodness of God to those around us, or even to people in faraway places, to wherever God will lead us to. Let us pray against the spirit of unbelief. That God will cleanse from our hearts every doubt, everything that fails the place of God in us, that God will remove it from us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters and the body of Christ. Pray for unity, for peace, and for progress in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, we give you thanks to bless you, our God. We thank you for everything you have done for us. We have come before you again this evening, Father Lord, to receive wisdom this morning, to receive wisdom, Lord God, and to be filled, O Lord God, with your word. Father, we thank you for everything you have done for us, for waking us to see this day which we have made. We say thank you, God. Father, we bless you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, our teacher, our comforter, our encourager our helper. We come before you this morning to receive from the word of God. Fill us with wisdom and let the will of God be done in our lives here on earth as it is in heaven. We acknowledge our sins this day, the ways we have done things contrary to the will of God we ask for mercy. Father, as your famous mercy, we pray that you help us to forgive everyone that has sinned against us. We commit our marriages, our families, Father, unto your hands this day. We commit our institutions, O Lord God, and everything that concerns us, our nations, our church, O Lord God. We put in your hands, Father Lord. We pray for unity and peace. We pray for progress, O Lord God. We pray for the overturning of every walk of the enemy. Father, you are our God. Unto you we have come, O Lord God, to ask for help. Deliver us, O Lord God, from every plan of the wicked. For you are our God, the glory and the lift up of our heads. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We commit this session to your hands, Holy Spirit. Take control of everything that we do now. Teach us, enlighten us, correct us and reveal the will of God concerning us to us as we study this word today in the name of Jesus. Thank you God for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. If God has been good to you, testify about his goodness to the people around you. That is the ministry we are called to, to change this world to the end of the world. That people will hear about God's plan for the salvation of men and that they will come and accept the salvation, that they will repent of their sin. For if they do not hear about God's plan and they do not know the truth, how will they accept it or receive it or even accept it? So we must be faithful to take it out, to take this message out. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must take it out so that people will hear and believe. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. We are studying the book of the Acts of the Apostles. We are seeing how faithful the Apostles were. They took the, uh, the, the Great uh, Commission, they, they took it seriously. They went out, just by the opposition, the persecution that they passed through, some of them were killed, stoned to death. James, we are, we are we perfect. We are reading today Acts chapter 12. We are going to read that James was killed. Despite everything that happened, they kept on taking the word to the nations. They were faithful. And that's why you and I have received this word today. And that's why 
the, the people outside that have not received it, they have the opportunity to hear the word because the word is out, outside there, and people are still taking it out, even today, obeying the great commission that the word must go out to the entire nations. God is relying on us. We are in this world for a purpose, and each of us must be busy about doing the Lord's will. What do we want to be remembered for? When the Lord comes, how will he receive us? What will our testimonies be about the things we have done in this world? So let us be serious about the Great Commission and know that this word has been entrusted to us. And none of us can stand before God and say that we did not know what he wanted us to do. The message has gone out. God has given each one of us a measure of faith. We must be willing to need our spirit to God to use so that we will be fruitful for our God in this world in the name of Jesus. Now we are going to read Acts chapter 12 to see the prescription that the apostles went through and to see how God intervened in the life of Peter, I he was miraculously released from the prison. It was a time of great persecution. For the apostles did not give up, they prayed. They kept on praying. So we have to learn that when we pass through difficult times in this world, when things come against us, when people gather against us, to try to prevent the work from going forth. The work of God from going on as God wants it to, wants it to be. That so we must pray and never give up. There is power in prayer. In, when we come together as a unified body of Christ to pray, we move heavens and God will answer us and the earth will be shaken on our behalf. Our God is faithful. What He did for Peter, He will do for us. Let us not doubt that God, who gave us this word, that we ensure that its word will go out to the end of the world, and it is going to back it with His word and with His with His, with his authority. That as we go out, it's going ahead of God to prepare the way. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Be encouraged. Never be discouraged about the things you are passing through. Look beyond your present situations and know that God is able to help you. That that trial that you're passing through, that is just for now, but you are going to be above it. At the end, when you come out, you will be stronger. And you see the hands of God at work in your life. You will be able to stand boldly to testify about the goodness of God to the people around you and to tell them that, that it is the truth that you have in you, the truth that you got from the word of God, the power of God, and you will be able to show it to them that the Bible is the word of God, the truth. It's reliable, dependable, and people can take it and use it. Take the promises in the word of God and apply it to their lives and see the results if they do not doubt. When they doubt, they cannot receive from God. You cannot receive from somebody you do not trust. Even when you receive it, you will not apply it in the right way to your life because you do not believe that what you have received from the person is something good. You may even think that it is something pointless that may destroy your life. We you know the way we are as human beings. We will not trust somebody. And the person gives us something, we might not use it. So that is the way it is. So we come to God, we must trust Him that whatever we are receiving from Him is something that we can use, that we improve our life, that we transform our life and make us better people, that we heal us of all our sicknesses and diseases, 
that will give us life, that will give us hope, that will refresh us every day, that will give us the boldness we need to testify about our God before the world, that will give us an utterance that will stand before people, even when we are brought before cancer, we are being tried, that God will be right there to defend us. We will have that trust in our God. And we believe and we have faith. We will not be disappointed. That's what the word says. The word of God says. Let us hold on to him. Let us trust God. That God will prove himself in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. With miraculous signs and wonders. Accompanying us wherever we go. As the goodness and mercy of God. Will lead us through life. That people will see the hands of God in our lives as God begins to walk in us to transform our character to bring us to the place where he wants us to be and make us the people he wants us to be so that we can represent him boldly in this world and stand firmly on the world without being afraid of anything. We know that God has not given us the spirit of fear. There is no fear in us. There is power in us. There is the love of God in us. And we have clear minds. We can see clearly. We can receive enlightenment from the word of God. We can understand who God is to us. And who we are to God. And what our missions here are, are, are in this world. What God expects of us. But our minds are not clouded with confusion. We are the children of God. We are not timid. We are not fearful of anything. Because God did not give us that spirit of fear. That spirit that cripples people and prevents them from achieving anything good in life. That creates a fear in them. That makes them not to even want to do anything. Not to even attempt to do anything. But we have the power of God in us. And God has given us the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the measure of that name of Jesus Christ, that every name must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have that banner to lift up before the world. We are the heads to which the ancient of days are all the coming. So lift up your head to your gates. Be that lifted up your ancient doors. That the King of glory will come in. So let us know who we have. Let us never doubt. Because God has said that we are his children and he created us in his image and likeness. God has said that he has given us everything that we need, that through Christ, that we can do everything. Through Christ who strengthens us, we can do everything. Let us believe that we are able to do everything in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I pray that this way we encourage you. Whatever your situation is today, whatever you are passing through, that only you knows. Know that God is right there with you and God is able to empower you, to help you to overcome. That you have already been lifted up above every problem that you ever pass in this world. Be positive. Look beyond the sorrow, the suffering of today. And know that God is going to help you. He said that He will not turn His ears from you. He will listen to your cry. He will call on Him in your troubles. He will not despise you. He will not bend you. He's going to listen to you and he's going to help you. Believe and receive the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now we are going to read about uh, Peter's miraculous escape from prison. Peter's miraculous escape from prison. And that's from Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Intending to persecute them, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guided by four spots of four soldiers each. 
all intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison while the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and the light shone in the cell. It struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around wrap your cloak around your around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. It's when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clashes and from every everything the Jewish people were anticipating. When this had gone on in, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark. Yet many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance. And a servant girl named Rhoda came to the came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed. She ran back without opening it and, ex and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You are out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, It must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were ast astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet, and despite how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers, about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had had a tall search made for him and did not find him, he cross examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Herod's death. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there a while. A while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. Having secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to increase and spread. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them 
John, also called Mark. May the Lord bless the reading of his face in our hearts, and may this faith produce the fruit of righteousness that we shall walk in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that our God is good and that these words will help us. We will hold on to it. We, will, we have seen the power of God being demonstrated in the lives of the apostles. That despite the persecution they passed through, that God was right there to help them. That God was right there to deliver them from the troubles. We have to take this out and use it and believe that God is able to help us. That no matter what situations we pass through, that God will not leave us alone. Especially when we have people that are prayerful around us. While Peter was in, uh, in the prison, the, the believers were praying. They did not stop praying. They were praying earnestly for him. And God answered and sent his angel to deliver him. Let us start and see from the beginning. James, the brother of John, this wicked king, Herod, put him to death. He executed him. And when he saw that what he did pleased the king, he planned also to execute Peter. He planned to do something very evil to Peter, and he took Peter and threw him in, threw him in jail, waiting for the Passover to bring him out, to make it public, better for him before the people, before probably going ahead to execute him. But God, while Peter was in, in prison, the church was praying for him. And, the, and God answered and sent his angel to go to that prison to bring Peter out. We saw how the prison was guarded. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. There, was, there were two guards. The, the angel passed through the first guard, the second one, before he took him out, outside. They were sleeping when God intervened. Peter thought that it was a dream when the angel came and woke him up in the night and told him to get up. But he got up and he obeyed and he went to the angel. He passed through all the guards, the chains and the things that were through there to hold Peter down. And the angel took him to the public square and left him there and disappeared and left him there. Peter came to himself and he now went to the house, one of the, oh, the, the house of one of the brethren where the believers were gathered. The servant there that came heard enough and did not believe it was Peter, though she recognized the voice. And she went and told him that, that Peter was standing outside there from the voice, to recognize the voice of the church of Peter's angel did not believe. But when they opened the door and he kept on knocking, they opened the door and they came in and they saw him. And he told them what God did, that they should go tell the brothers about it. And he left because his life was at stake. They were looking for him. Everyone was spent on killing him, and destroying and cutting the rock from going up. For God is God. He works in miraculous ways. As ever was set against the church, the church was going. The people, that's why they were hiding, they were still praying. They were still praying. No matter where, what we pass through in this world, if we cannot probably, probably, publicly come out to worship God and to do the things that we should do publicly, we should continue to pray wherever we are. And we should believe that God will move on our behalf, that things will change. We will continue to cry out to God and to pray. God will answer us in the name of Jesus. Let us look at uh, 11. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's crushes. And from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. Yes, it was God that sent the angel to rescue him. No other person. That's the same thing God is going to do for us. He's going to send help to rescue us from the expectation of, our, of the wicked people that are holding us, holding things against us that they think they can use. Our God is faithful. What we did in the life of Peter, if we continue to be faithful, 
We do not put our hands into evil things against anyone. God will hear us when we cry out, when we pray to Him. We shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The enemy will be put to shame, and God will prevail in every matter that concerns his children in the name of Jesus. Yes, God prevented Peter, he took Peter away, and the expectation of the Jewish people to see the death that he was going to, to be executed did not come to reality. Because when they woke up in the morning, it was a different story that they heard. They did not know what happened. How Peter got out, but they knew that it was miraculous. It was the power of God. It was through the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to verse 12. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark. Here many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance. And a servant girl named Rhoda came up to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed and ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You are out of your mind. They told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be its angel. One thing is that God, the Spirit led Peter to the house of Mary. The, the, the believers were there, they were gathered and they were praying for Peter. They were praying because they knew that he had been locked, locked, uh, put in jail, uh, imprisoned by Herod. They also knew that James was executed. So they were passing through a difficult time great tribulation. So they were praying for him and for the other apostles. And as, as they were praying, Peter came knock on that door. And Rhoda went and heard the voice of Peter and told him to speak. It was an immediate answer to their prayer. You can imagine how overjoyed they were that God is truly the God that answers the prayer of his children. And that's how God is going to do for us. God is going to answer our prayers. It may come the way it happened in the case of Peter almost immediately. We may receive it tomorrow. It may be one year, but we should never give up that God has, that God hears our prayer when we pray to Him, when we call on Him, and we answer us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, but Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and describe how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Amen. And he told them, Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and then he left to another place. He told them what what he went through. Ah, the angels brought him out of prison. Now God did this. That is again confirming to the people that God is truly a faithful God. God can be trusted that He will never lay them down. Can you imagine uh, the kind of joy and boldness and, and renewed hope that Peter gave to them when he stood there and told them that this happened by the power of God. At night, this was what happened. So, what can take the joy of God from them? What will stop them from continuing to testify about the goodness of God? When they are seeing it right, they were seeing it right in their face, right? In their faces, what God was doing, how God touched Peter and brought him out from the prison. They had the testimony, and God was confirming and backing everything up with his power. So these believers, they knew and they saw the power of God. They saw God existed and they saw that God could be relied on. That God was a faithful God and He is a faithful God today. That we do not disappoint them. That everything they were doing that God saw and God was there to help them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Then in the morning, that's verse 20. Yes, it's in the morning. There was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had happened of become of Peter. They woke up. Peter was sleeping between two guards, and the soldiers woke up and they didn't find him. They find him again. You can imagine the commotion. The Bible said there was no small commotion. There was a very big commotion. What happened? Where is Peter? What happened to us? They knew they were in trouble because they had to give an account of what happened to Ella. What did they tell this thing, this wicked thing that wanted to execute this thing? What happened to our lives? How did Peter leave this place? They could not imagine what happened. They knew that the place was heavily guarded. How did this Peter of a man, how did he leave this place? What happened? What miracle happened? They could not understand what had happened. What happened to Peter? The man. After Herod had a Taurus had a Torah search made for him and did not find him. He would not find him because Peter was being cheated by God. There was no way Herod was going to see him. Peter had not completed his mission. Peter still had to take the word out. He was on a very important assignment. There was no way Herod was going to see him. There was no way Herod was going to stop the work of God from going forward. God had determined that Peter, determined that Peter was going to change his word somewhere else, that it was the word. He will take it out. So Herod will and will not stop the work of God. He will not find us. Amen? Amen. The enemy will not find us. When God has given us an assignment to do for him, we must complete our assignment in the name of Jesus. Amen. After Herod had a total search made for him and did not find him, he crossed examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. He cross examined the guards. Now it was an issue of trust. Did I even trust you, these guards that were here? Did you allow him to go? What happened? It was an, an issue of trust. And since he did not find Peter, he did to the guards what he wanted to do to Peter. He had them executed. In the name of Jesus, there's going to be an exchange. What the enemy has planned for us and has put God there to guide us that he will, be, he will do his evil deeds. God Almighty is going to turn everything around and there will be an escape. We, we, our souls will escape out of the corner snare and the enemy will now put the people he put there for his own evil purpose to use. Those that surrender themselves to the wicked to use and the children of God will find their way out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Error death. This was the error that was going to stop the work, the, the work of God, that was going to execute people. We are going to read about his own death. The man that told that he could stop the work of God. No man is immortal. We are all men. Now it was time for him to meet his own death. And it was planned according to the will of God. Because God was going to bring him down. He was proud. Wanted to be, be, be accept that position that he was with God. But God brought him. Let's see, let's read and see what happened to Herod. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon, the man that did not live in peace. Quarreling. Wasn't living in peace with his neighbors. He was quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. Powerful man. He was quarreling with these two nations, nations, the people of Tyre and Sidon. And they joined forces together and sought an audience with him. They wanted to come to resolve the issue they had with him. They were coming to ask for peace. Having secured the, the support of Lazarus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they dedicated on the king's country for their good support. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public ad address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God. Not of a man. That was what he did. 
when the people of Tyre and Sidon came to Herod for the peace which they retained, he delivered a public address to them, and the people heard it. Hi! That's very good. This is the voice of a God, not of a, not of a man. And he accepted it. He did not tell her that I'm a man like you. The way Peter did. When he told, um, who was it he told again? We read it when he told someone that, that was going to bow them to him. Like, no, no, don't do this. I'm, I'm also a man. I think it was the Ethiopia eunuch. Don't do this to me. I'm a man like you. But Aaron accepted it. They liked the idea of being called a, a, a God. But then the wrath of God was upon him. Let's see what happened. No man can take the honor that is due to God. No one can take the honor that is due to God. If so someone is giving you that honor, let them know that you are a man, that they can't worship you, that only God should be worshipped. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address, address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately, there was no wasting of any time. Immediately, they exclaimed and said it, and Herod did not say, no, stop it. Immediately, God saw his heart. He didn't even have to wait for him to say yes or no. He saw that he liked it. He thought that he had accepted the praise, that immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. He was eaten by worms. It was a king that had so much power, so much influence, that two nations, fire and sit up came. Because they depended on him for food. Their countries, countries depended on him for food. To come and make peace with him when he was having this quarrel or fights with, with them. It's agreement with them. He was him that was trying to stop the work of God from going forward. This was the same error that killed James, the brother of John. The same error that took Peter and threw him in jail. Look at him, we've seen the same period. Look at what happened to his life. He was struck down because he did not give God the praise that was due to God. Struck down and worms ate him and he died. Worms. Let us give God the praise that is due to God and humble ourselves before God and ask for mercy. Let us not ascribe any praise or anything to ourselves because we are human beings. God created us. To him belongs all praise, all honor, worship, glory, and power. Everything belongs to him. Whatever we ask today is by the grace of God. And we must know and accept it that God is God and that we are human. We cannot take anything that is not ours that God has not given to us. When people are lifting up our names and worshiping us, we have to call them to order that no, I'm a man like you. You cannot do that to me. Give God a praise. Worship God, not any man. Hallelujah. Amen. But the word of God continued to increase and spread. The enemy that was trying to prevent the work of God from going forward, from spreading, was killed. He died and once once ate him up and died. But the word of God continued to, to increase and spread. Amen. According to the will of God. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. They knew what the apostles knew where God called them to do. They were faithful. The Bible is Testifies that Barnabas and Saul finished their mission and that they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. What will be our testimony? 
for we finish our mission? Do we even set our mission? Do we even know what our mission is? What God wants us to do? God wants us to take this word to the entire world. world to tell them about the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ and to bring men back to him. It's a gospel of reconciliation. God loves us all. That why we are yet in sin, he sent his son to die for us. He wants us to come back to him. Repent of our sins and accept that we are sinners. And God will show us mercy. He's not going to send us any one that comes to him in that way. He's standing at, at the door knocking. Anyone that hears the knock and opens the door, God will come in and die in the sin. Are we ready to allow God into our lives? For him to come in to dine with us. Are we ready to be faithful servants that we take this word to the ends of the world as God has entrusted this gospel of truth to us? What do you want to do? What do you want to be remembered for? It's already been given to us. Let us make up our minds. God has given us the free way. He has shown us what is good. He has shown us what is evil. He has shown us what his will is. He has called us to a, a, to, to a life of that, a gospel of reconciliation to the entire world. He has given us his love. He has shown us what true love is. And he wants us to take that love to the entire world. Are we ready to do the will of God? Are we listening to what the Spirit is telling us? Look at the life of the apostles. What a passed through. They were faithful. We just read from this passage that James was killed. Why was he killed? He was killed for the sake of the gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are they that are killed because of the gospel. That they should rejoice. They should rejoice. I have it written somewhere. If I want to read it, let me see if I can find it. That they should rejoice. That when they were persecuted and killed them because of the gospel, we should rejoice. That's from uh, the Beatitudes. I'll go there to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 or something. So. That it should be rejoice. When people persecute you, when you suffer because of the gospel, know that your reward is great in heaven. So, we persecution stop us from doing the will of God. That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Oh, let me start from verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted and they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So that you should rejoice and be glad. There's a reward for everyone that will pass through persecution. So the fear of persecution should not make people make us not to take the world. The fear of people out there who are trying to prevent the truth from going out should not make us not to do what God has called us to do. Because they say the world. And God who has promised will be able to fulfill his promise in our lives in the name of Jesus. In this world, the boundary lines are falling on us in pleasant places. In the world to come, we are going to have a good, a very good inheritance in our God. And in our Lord Jesus Christ, God has done a place for us. Jesus Christ said that in his father's house are many mightiness, if you are not so you have told us. That behold, he has gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us, that he is, he is here we will be. That if we do not go, that God will not send the comfort and the spirit of truth that will teach us everything that we need to do. We thank God that we have the spirit of truth because today the Holy Spirit has helping us with everything that we, we do. The Holy Spirit is revealing the will of God to us. The Holy Spirit is helping us, even it helping us to understand what we should understand in the world. That shows us the errors in our lives, the things to do, so that we can repent and come back. 
to God. We thank God for his faithfulness. He has not left us alone. Let us rejoice and be glad because we have a God that will never fail. We thank God for the lives of the apostles as we continue to study the lives of these great saints of God. We pray that God will touch us, touch us, and prompt us that we too will take this word seriously. And God give us the boldness to testify for him before the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and bless you for bringing us to the end of this story today. Thank you, God, for everything you have done in us. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, because we believe, Father Lord, that persecution will not stop the church from moving forward. We know that at the time of persecution, there is great growth and increase in the church, O Lord God. And many people will come to receive, they will believe, and they will be ready to hold them to the truth. Father, we saw that James was found that executed in the passage that we read, and that Peter was thrown in, in prison. We saw how miracle, you miraculously released Peter from prison. Father, you are gone. We pray that in whatever prison that we find ourselves today, Father Lord, that you send your holy angels, O Lord God, to release us from every prison set by men, O Lord God. Every prison, Father Lord, of the mind, actual prison, whatever it is, O Lord God, that has, Father Lord, enclose your children, O Lord God, that not make them, O Lord God, to see and to understand, to see the truth and to understand it, O Lord God. We pray that you remove those barriers in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. For you are our God. Be thy exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. In Jesus' name we are praying. Know that God loves you. We love you too.